Travis Brzezowski, Loy Hanthel, Lorraine Cater, and Josiah Schultz are proud to present the Steel Bridge for the 2011 American Society of Civil Engineers Regional Competition as part of San Diego State University's Capstone Project Fall 2010. The competition requirements are set forth by ASCE and the SDSU faculty. Teams must design a 110 scale steel bridge. The specifications of the bridge include, but are not limited to, a fixed end backspan that extends over a 15 foot river and a 5 to 6 foot cantilever end that extends over a wetland. The design will include a clearance of 1 foot 6 inches from the river's surface to be used as storage for utility lines. The bridge will be loaded and judged based on the following predetermined categories. Durability, constructability, usability, stiffness, construction speed, efficiency, economy, and display. Initially, the design of the bridge was based on the analysis of a simple frame that met the criteria presented by the ASCE. Influence lines were analyzed to find the maximum shear forces and bending moments of the structure. The frame was then analyzed with forces that simulate the deck loads used in the competition as shown in the diagram. The data collected from the analysis demonstrated that the end of the cantilever and the midpoint of the main span needed the most reinforcement to ensure minimal deflection. The design process consisted of three series of designs, of which each design evolved until the designs were optimized and then compared to one another. The design of the Alpha Series bridges was based on maximizing strength of the members and ease in constructability. A box truss was used to resist axial torsion and buckling and was determined to be the most efficient, lightweight, and easily constructible support for the bridge. Upon analysis, many of the truss members were zero force members, taking up space and weight but adding no structural support. Bridge A3 was a culmination of the three Alpha Series bridges, utilizing a horizontal tie across the main span instead of a second truss system under the box truss. The tie had a minimal weight compared to the supporting truss and was sufficient enough to absorb the vertical and horizontal forces, resulting in less deformation during loading. The Bravo Bridge Series minimized the weight of the members without compromising the strength of the structure by using pyramid-style truss and support systems to disperse the forces through the smaller members. A pyramid truss was chosen with the intention of utilizing the strength of the triangle shape to its ultimate potential by maximizing resistance to axial and buckling forces. The Bravo Series consisted of two bridges, However, B1 was abandoned early due to the extensive weight of the bridge. The support for the pyramid truss on bridge B2 evolved to reinforce the four fixed beams that support the bridge by extending members from the beams to provide arch-like support. The design of the Charlie series bridges was based on utilizing the strength of an arch, minimizing the weight of the members, and ensuring the structural stability of the bridge. Although three bridges were designed in the Charlie series, only C3 was considered due to its optimal design. The arch of C3 crossed the length of the main span and the cantilever to absorb the bending forces. Vertical supports were installed to hold the arch in place and to transfer the compressive and tensile forces throughout the members. The horizontal tie across the main span below the arch was used to transfer forces through the members vertically along the support and horizontally along the tie, duplicating the effect of the arch being supported by a foundation. As depicted, bridge C3 is colored in various shades to illustrate that different members have different cross-sectional areas and therefore weights can be optimized. The following equations were derived to find the perfect parabola to serve as the arch. X is chosen by using the distance of the joints from the center of the arch. This equation utilizes the length of a completed arch and the maximum height of the arch in order to find the height of the arch at any point along the span. Solving for the entire length of the span gives us a completed arch perfectly shaped to withstand the maximum amount of force. 
The most favorable bridge from each series was chosen and compared to determine a final design. Bridge B2 was discarded immediately due to poor aesthetics and the difficulty involved in construction during the competition. The weights and deflections for both bridges were considered and are displayed here. Bridge C3 was chosen because in the competition, 0.36% of the weight is of equal importance to the deflection. Therefore, when considering these deflections, the weight is the deciding factor and C3 is lighter. Bridge C4 combined elements from the Alpha and Bravo series bridges and continued the evolution of Bridge C3. The design and members from C3 was used to keep the bridge light and strong, but the arch was elevated to be welded along the truss. This was to satisfy the requirements of the perfect arch equation and to strengthen the connection of the arch to the bridge. The horizontal tie is reinforced with the vertical member allowing more forces to be absorbed while laterally reinforcing the tie. The truss is similar in design to bridge C3, however it uses the spacing from bridge A1 to effectively lower the number of members used while providing sufficient support. This facilitates an easy construction and a lightweight design. Durability is the ability to withstand applied loads. While determining the durability of the design, there were two main concerns that needed to be addressed. The first was to optimize the smallest gauge steel in order to minimize our bridge weight. The second concern was to ensure that the steel used would remain in the elastic range, because as soon as the steel reaches the plastic range, it would deform at a fast impairment rate. Once the member areas were determined, the following three different types of steels were compared. ASTM A36 steel, Alloy 1018 steel, and 1144 steel. The goal of this analysis was to find a type of steel that optimized both weight and the ability to withstand compression and buckling. The first steel that was eliminated was ASTM A36 steel, due to the fact that selected bridge member failed by buckling. 1144 steel was the next to be eliminated, solely based on the weight. Both 1018 steel and 1144 steel performed equivalent to one another. However, 1018 steel was lighter and therefore chosen for the bridge. Stiffness coefficient is the ratio of a force acting on a linear mechanical system to its displacement from equilibrium. In typical bridge design, the stiffness coefficient is considered an important factor due to its effect on the side sway. However, the ASCE bridge stiffness coefficient was not considered due to the minimal lateral forces the load will induce. The bridge will be held in place while a force of 75 pounds is exerted on it horizontally. The bridge was designed to withstand lateral force of 1850 pounds while maintaining a 96% safety factor for horizontal forces without including the stiffness coefficient. This table explains the maximum and the minimum stiffness coefficient of the bridge. There is a 20% difference between the maximum and minimum values with a maximum stiffness coefficient of 0.091. The project site for the ASCE Steel Bridge Competition is contained in an area of 71 feet by 20 feet. The site contains a 15-foot river, a 5-foot wetland, and an 18-foot staging yard. The staging yard is used for storage of the tools, piers, fasteners, and steel bridge members at the start of the timed construction. The constructability of our steel bridge was considered at every step in the design process. In order to score well in the time construction portion of the competition, it is pertinent to maximize the number of bridge components. The truss system for our steel bridge is composed of two legs and nine prefabricated truss members. Each member of the truss system will be pre-welded in order to act as one member, which will minimize the number of connections that need to be fastened at the competition. The truss members will connect with one another by means of a dovetail connection. This connection will be fabricated with the computer numerical control machine in the Mechanical Engineering Laboratory at San Diego State University. Using this machine to fabricate the connections will allow the members to fit closely decreasing the sag and resulting in a lower deflection. Once the dovetails are connected, they will be secured by means of a nut and bolt fastener. 
The placement of the nut and bolt are either near the bottom or in the middle of the truss connection, depending on the truss configuration. The reason for the variance in the placement of the fasteners is that by placing the nut at the bottom of the truss is difficult where the truss V opens to the top. This would create a very tight space for the builders to fasten the bolt and connect the truss members during the time competition. The reason for placing the bolt low is that the bottom of the truss will be in tension and therefore it will help lower the overall deflection of the bridge since the dovetails will tend to split in this region resulting in an increased deflection of the truss. The construction of the arch will occur in two phases. The first phase will consist of eight members forming the arch for the main span. The second phase will consist of four members forming the half arch for the cantilever end. The arch members that are touching the truss will be welded to the truss system so that the truss member and the arch member act as one bridge member and therefore lower the number of connections to be made. The arch members connect together by use of a male and female system and are then fastened with a nut and bolt. The construction of the mid-span will make up the final phase of construction. Sixteen diagonal members and nine cross members will be used. The mid-span members will be fabricated with the use of a male-female connections. The female members will be welded to the truss so it acts as one member. After this step, the steel bridge will be complete. The construction sequence of the steel bridge will occur in three phases. The right truss and arch will be constructed during the first phase. The first step is to place a vertical support, also known as a pier, on the foundation easement at the far end of the construction site. Next, the truss members are connected while using the temporary piers to hold the truss steady. The locations of the piers are represented by arrows. The second pier will then be placed on the foundation easement between the river and wetland, and then the remaining truss can be connected. Next, the vertical supports are to be attached. Then, the arches are to be assembled. Finally, the vertical tie bar is attached, and then the horizontal tie bar is fastened. For phase two, these six steps are to be repeated for the left truss. After the two truss systems are constructed, Phase 3 will begin. First, the sides will be connected with the cross members. Then, the diagonal members will be attached. This process will complete the construction of the bridge. Construction costs for the competition are weighted and estimated on the basis of bridge weight, tools used, laborers needed, penalties incurred, and bridge deflection. The total cost of materials for this project will be $1,060,000. This amount, however, does not account for the deflection costs of the bridge or errors that will be assessed to the bridge during construction at competition. This cost is exclusively for the weight of the members and all components of the steel bridge design. Since we will only be charged for using piers, the total cost of tools used during the competition will be $90,000. The total cost of labor for this project will be $300,000 due to the fact that we will utilize the maximum of six builders allowed in order to assure that we will be able to complete the time construction including repairs within 30 minutes. The table below lists the total project costs for all materials, tools, and laborers that are proposed to be used during the competition, resulting in a grand total of $1,450,000. There are numerous benefits to competing in the steel bridge competition some of which are a sense of accomplishment for oneself, team, and school. Securing a win in the competition will put SDSU on the National Civil Engineering map, which will also attract local sponsorships into San Diego State's American Society of Civil Engineers. This will in turn increase future enrollment into the school society. Finally, exposure to possible employers or employment will serve as a catalyst to the student's future and career. The final step in the preparation of the bridge prior to conference is to suit the metal with its fighting Aztec colors. On behalf of Lloyd Hanthel, Lorraine Cater, Josiah Schultz, Lorraine I'm Travis Brzezowski, and thank you for watching.